Hi, my name is Sharon Harris, and I'm a motion designer in the material design team at Google. As you may already know, material design was founded on the metaphor of smart paper, a collection of surfaces that can adapt to guide users through an experience. Part of that metaphor is shown through an elevation system that accurately renders light and shadows. But coordinating those surfaces with motion in a smart and elegant way has been a tougher challenge until now. Our latest material update is the motion system, including a set of guidelines, specs, and developer documentation for making the most important motion in an app, UI transitions. Transitions are a coordinated sequence of motions that help users understand and navigate the app. Great transitions are fundamental to the usability of an app. Our new system includes four transition patterns animating between components and full screen views. Container transform, shared access, fade through, and fade. The system also provides customization options to stylize your transitions. You can adjust the duration, easing, and motion path to express the style of your app. Now we'll talk through the four transition patterns in more detail. The first pattern is container transform. This pattern creates a visible connection between two UI elements. For example, when a card transforms into a details page, the user's focus is directed to identify that the details page is an expanded version of the card. Now let's look at how to implement the container transform pattern on Android. First, identify the UI element of your container in your starting layout and give it a transition name. In your ending layout, identify the UI element into which your starting UI element will transform. Give this element the same transition name. In your ending fragment, set the shared element enter transition to a new material container transform inside the onCreate method. Finally, when the user taps on the starting element, begin the container transform with a fragment transaction containing a mapping of the tapped element to the transition name. For information on how to apply a container transform between activities or views, see the developer documentation. Our second pattern is called shared axis. This pattern uses a shared transformation on the X, Y, or Z axis to reinforce the spatial or navigational relationship between elements. For example, when tapping next in a setup flow, both the outgoing and incoming elements transform horizontally in unison. By moving in the same direction, elements are perceived to be related to each other. Now let's look at how to implement the shared axis pattern on Android. To add a shared axis transition in the x-axis, set up the entering and exiting transitions of your outgoing and incoming fragments. In your outgoing fragment, create a new material shared axis transition and set it as your fragment's exit transition in the onCreate method. Be sure to specify the forward property of the transition. This is what controls the direction in which the fragment will animate. In your incoming fragment, create a new material shared axis and set it as your fragment's enter transition in the onCreate method, making sure the forward here matches the exit transition of your outgoing fragment. When you're ready to navigate to your new fragment, add or replace the outgoing fragment with a new instance of your incoming fragment. Your outgoing fragment will now slide and fade out to the left, while your incoming fragment will slide and fade in. For details on how setting up a transition in the return direction or for the other axis and scenarios, see the documentation on material.io. Our third pattern is the fade through. You can use fade through for transitions between UI elements that do not have a strong relationship for each other. For example, transitions triggered by tapping a bottom navigation bar use this fade through pattern. Destinations in the bottom navigation typically are not strongly related to each other, so this fade-through pattern doesn't mislead users into thinking that they can swipe horizontally between destinations. Now let's look at how to implement the fade-through pattern on Android. Setting this up is nearly identical to implementing the shared access pattern. Set your outgoing fragment's exit transition to a new instance of material fade-through. Likewise, set your incoming fragments enter transition to a new instance of material fade through. Just completing these steps will create a working animation between your two fragments. You might notice each individual UI component in your layouts scaling out and back in. 
to have the fade through or other transitions including shared access run only on a specific UI element, set the transition group property to true on the view you wish to target. To customize the look and feel of the transition further, see the developer documentation. Our fourth and final pattern is the fade. You can use a fade for UI elements that enter or exit the screen. This pattern applies to components like dialogues, menus, snack bars, and fabs. Elements that enter use a quick fade in and subtly scale up. When elements exit, they simply fade out. Now let's look at how to implement the fade pattern to show and hide a fab on Android. In your activity or fragment, construct a new material fade. Then begin a transition by calling transitionManager.beginDelayedTransition, passing in the fab's parent and our newly constructed material fade. Finally, alter the visibility of the fab to have the transition system animate the change with the supply material fade transition. Using the same code, you can change the fab's visibility back to visible, and the fab will fade back in. These patterns are designed to be simple and functional by default. But the good news is you can customize any transition. For example, using an arc motion path creates a more emphasized and dramatic style. Android's container transform can easily accept a path to create such an effect. For a dropped in implementation, set your container's path motion to a new instance of material arc motion, a class which provides a standard material arc out of the box. Some of the feedback we hear across our design and engineering communities is that part of what makes motion hard to implement is that there aren't many tools to help designers collaborate with engineers. Spec in motion is tricky which is a shame since it's necessary for bridging the gap between design intent and implementation. This is another challenge we're tackling with material design. Our updated motion guidelines present motion specs in a new interactive timeline format. They include all the basic information needed to understand and build an animation. These specs were authored using a web-based tool called Direct, which was created by Google Motion designer John Schlemmer and used internally by many other Google designers. We're excited to now share these motion specs publicly in our guidelines to help explain all the details of emotion design. The code for Direct is open source at this link, so you can create and host your own Direct motion specs. Make sure to share creations with us. Would you find a tool like Direct useful in your work? Please let us know in the comments. As you may have noticed, this motion content is tagged as beta on our site. That's because we wanted to release this early to make sure we're taking the right technical and design approach before adding more features. There are so many directions to take this work in the future, and we'd love to know what you think. Be sure to share your feedback in the comments below or by reaching out to at Material Design on Twitter. We're hopeful this is just a start in our mission to make motion easy to implement. Thanks for watching.